surveyed the Middletown Valley in Maryland, he wrote that it was the most beautiful valley he had ever seen. Nancy and Ron Walls are doing their best to keep it that way. Ron recently retired from a long career as an architect with the United States Navy. Now he helps Nancy full time in running their family nursery business and developing an ever expanding series of gardens. Here, Nancy is the architect, designing the gardens with a decidedly English accent. Nancy, we're in Middletown, Maryland, which is right outside of Frederick. Mm -hmm. And this beautiful country garden of yours in late spring, and it's a riot of color for being late spring. We've got a little bit of overlap. I think mm -hmm. some things coming on for summer. And your beautiful containers that line your long border here really add a lot of punch with color. This little annual is just, well, that's such a different type of flower. Mm -hmm. Yes, the container saved the day. The container and saved the day. That's a little mimulus for cool weather. And what cultivar is that, or what strain? Um, it's a seed mimulus, and it's Calypso mix. So that's what you get if you sow the seed. You get this color, this speckly one, and this other the speckly rose, one. Yes. All in the same batch. Yes, yes, indeed. When you say it's an annual for cool weather, explain that to us, because well, I... It's, it ceases to set seed after the nights get warmer than 55, about 55 degrees. So you always want to have it for your spring plantings and then again in the fall. So that would be an alternative, say, to pansies. Oh, yes. And this is a pretty, it looks like a chrysanthemum. Agaranthemum, yes. It's one of those, they changed the genus name, agaranthemum. And is that a special cultivar? Um, it's just cream. Cream. It, it'll bloom all summer, though. It can take the heat. So this will take the heat, and then you'll switch out the mimulus for another summer annual? Yes. Well, I like that idea. Where did you get the idea to use pots along the border? Because you've got all these perennials. Well, actually, it's an old idea. I read it in one of Gertrude Jekyll's books about English gardening, that when she wanted to take a photograph, she would just grab one of her pots and plunk them in a bare spot. Well, that, that's a good tip for all of us, but you don't have many bare spots right mm -hmm. now. You've got this combination that starts back there with that shocking, would you call that shocking pink? That's or? A, a pink Maidyland A rose. pink Maidyland rose and the Iris Siberica and then mm -hmm. a lily. Mm -hmm. Well, it kind of worked itself out. I had the um, pink Maidyland there and actually the Siberian Iris seeded itself there. So some things I leave, let nature do what it likes. And what about the lily? That's a pretty distinctive color. Yeah, I like the brightness of it here towards the end of the border. It's nice to have the bright colors. Is that a special cultivar? It's just one of the Asiatic lilies. Just one of the Asiatic. And the baby's breath, that's very vigorous baby's breath, but you've got, you're sort of letting that weave through the border and be a, a transition from one type of plant to another? Yes, and this particular cultivar, um, Drosophila white festival, blooms all summer long, which is a plus because the old-fashioned baby's breasts would bloom once and then be done with, and this one just will keep on going. It really just sort of dances above all the other foliage, doesn't mm -hmm. it? The, the foliage isn't much, it's that gray-green, but the white airiness of the flowers and the lickness, or the, don't they call that the Maltese cross? Maltese cross, yeah. yeah. With that orange color. That's again another you. I like to use bright colors. I here. was gonna say you do you're not afraid of color at all. You've got the bright orangey red roses with that orange lickness Chalcedonica. I just like that name. And soon my lady's bed straw will start to bloom and that's a gold. So you've got lots of golds, reds and orange and then we jump over to this side of the border and you've got shades of purple and mauve. Mm -hmm. But more color in this pot, and oh, osteospermum. Osteospermum. Look at that color in the center. That purple picks up the purple of the petunia. It's another cool weather plant. Wow, that's great. Well, I'm going to have to start thinking about adding a few containers to my tiny little border just to bring some color in. It's lots of fun. We originally bought this farm because we um, wanted to raise horses here. 
I grew up in Pennsylvania and I had a love for horses and being on a farm. I rode horses and trained them. The kids always grew up with horses. My children all rode horses and they had ponies from the time they were little on. And as they got older and got interested in boys, the horses became less and less important. So we still have two horses in the field and there are lawn ornaments. The horses are never really treated like horses. They're more treated like part of the family. Nancy, what section of the garden do you call this? This is the lotus rill. R-I-L-L. -L. All right, and I don't know what that means. A rill is um, a way to work water down from a higher place, like in the mountain, down into the garden area. Okay. And capture some of the water for the plants. And um, in England, they had it done so perfectly that they didn't use cement. They had stones that were put on end and packed tightly enough that if the water kept moving, it never leaked. So this is an American version of a rill. That's I've correct. learned something new about water gardens. And the lotus, even when they're not in bloom, I love the big leaves. They're mm -hmm. just, they're so attractive. I and love you, how the water falls off of them. And beads up. Mm -hmm. And you've got it surrounded. It really feels very English in that way. You've surrounded it with the salvias and the centranthus and the nepeta, and they're so robust. Do you really work the soil? Oh, we put a lot of organic things in early in the spring, and of course the centranthus lends itself well to this garden because it not only is a perennial, but it seeds itself about. And the nepeta is a great combination, the two of those Stay together. Soft. Which nepeta is that? Is that a special? That's Mucinii. And I like the backdrop of the evergreen with the roses it's, as the sort of well, the focal point. This is New Dawn, and originally what I was going to do was to put a walkway through here, mm -hmm. so I needed an arbor, so I put New Dawn on either side, thinking that that would be the start of my arbor. Well, it changed my mind, as gardeners often do, and so I pinned New Dawn on either side. So this is only two roses back here. Well, I like the way you've used it. It it's, looks more like a shrub rose instead of the climber that it is. Mm -hmm. A heat-tolerant viola outlasts most varieties of pansies. And you can really beat the heat with a little snow in summer. Stay with us. Nancy and Ron Walls have 10 acres of garden and a nursery business to run at their home in Middletown, Maryland. Fortunately, they have plenty of help. Nancy is the main gardener, but Ron's experience as a naval architect comes in handy with building and hardscape projects. And Ron and Nancy's four children have definitely inherited their parents' passion for gardening. Um, my oldest is Curtis, and he's married to Laurie, and he's an aerospace engineer. And he, when he was younger, um, used to help me clean up the buildings, and he made all my arbors. And Cassie is my next oldest, and she's a physical therapist at Shock Trauma. So it's a great stress relie reliever for her to come and help in the gardens. Gretchen is my third child, and she is a biomed engineer. She's a whiz on the computer, so she does all of my newsletters. Jessica is my youngest, and she's a school teacher. She teaches the fourth grade, which is a great thing for her to have, career for her to have because it gives her her summers and her weekends and after school and she comes and pitches in on the business and helps in the garden. Your garden has lots of different levels. You're really, it's almost, starts out as a steep hill and then it, you've divided it up with stone retaining walls and then flat areas and then it goes to another level. How yes. much area do you garden in? Well, our farm is 20 acres, and a little more than half is in gardens. 10 acres. Mm -hmm. And that's just you and your husband and the help from your daughter. Yes, Jessica. This area has a little bit of a formal feel to it with the boxwoods. Well, originally I put hybrid teas in here, but the wind was such a problem that what I decided to do was to, in between the boxwood, is to put spring bulbs and then replace them with um, summer annuals and galtonia. In the beds over in that area, I have the summer hyacinth galtonia, which is a wonderful late bloomer and fragrant as well. That almost looks like a nepeta, the soft lavender. It's a dwarf sage. A dwarf sage. Mm -hmm. And you've got rue. And santalina. And santalina. And of course, lamb's ears. And I have the dwarf pomegranate shrubs on the corners. And in the fall, they're, they're beautiful because they're very golden. 
Do they get any of the little fruits or well, flowers? We're, our zone is warm enough to grow them, but too cold because they um, bloom on last year's growth to have the pomegranates on them. But they make a pretty foliage plant. Mm -hmm. It's very colorful even without the summer annuals, but I mean, even though they haven't come on mm -hmm. yet. Mm -hmm. This snow in summer is a really an old-fashioned perennial. Yes, it is. Cerastium tomentosum. And it just spreads itself about the garden, as well as doing a little bit of reseeding down into the rocks. And I like the gray foliage. After it finishes blooming, do you just shear it back? Yes, I cut it back and then continue to let the foliage creep around the garden. It's a nice foil for other plants. And it's created a little sort of carpet around this Siberian mm -hmm. iris. Mm -hmm. And it's hardy in zone six. Mm -hmm. And then you can, it keeps that nice soft gray foliage all summer long. And silver so important to have in the garden. Cerastium tomentosum. Your containers are just bursting with color and all different types of plants mm -hmm. that you may not grow together in the garden, but you're putting them together in containers. They're good companions and I try to use perennials, annuals and tender perennials as well and one new thing on the market is the little viola freckles and not only does it bloom all summer it's very fragrant. So it's going to tolerate the heat unlike the other pansies that we have to pull out come yes. May. Yes. And it's very old-fashioned looking. Mm -hmm. Doesn't it look a little bit like lace or something? Mm -hmm. Mixes well with the hookah crimson curls and the euphorbia. Yeah, the euphorbia, I like that dark color kind of complements the dark edges of mm -hmm. the freckles. And you can put the container out early in the spring because it can take the cold and then it'll grow on through the summer. So viola freckles, if you want to have a pansy that you can put out early and it'll go late. Exactly. Nancy has a special garden that not only looks good, it smells good. And some of the newest structures here are actually some of the oldest. Stay with us. Nancy and Ron Wall's farmstead in Middletown, Maryland isn't just packed with plants, it's also full of history. The first known inhabitants were the Lamar family going back to the 1700s. The Buzzard family then owned the property and built the farmhouse in the 1860s. Nancy and Ron renovated the structure to house their own family. Two of the original buildings, the summer kitchen and the spring house, have been carefully restored. The Walses have even acquired more historic structures, transporting them to their property and rebuilding them. It seems that people are impatient with the older buildings and a lot of them are getting torn down. So we started to save buildings whenever we could. And we have a friend that's a renovator and he often would come and tell us when there was a old building that would be available. The, one of the log cabins that we moved here was scheduled to be burned, but because of the drought they couldn't get a burn permit. So we were able to bring it here. We moved this log cabin here to the property and I wanted to create a garden around it that people could see how they didn't have to have a lawn. They could grow all different types of herbs and perennials in a small space, including the North Pole apple trees, which get 10 feet tall but only two feet wide. And not only is this beautiful, but a lot of it, as you said, is functional. So the apples produce apples and get the herbs from the herb garden. That would be more in keeping with the log cabin. Yes. They would have grown things that were... That you, were useful. Useful. And they probably wouldn't have grown this beautiful, tropical-looking perennial. Osteospermum, uh, the symphony series. But it's certainly beautiful. That dark center and that, that color is almost fluorescent. It looks good with the sage, with the variegated sage. For growing osteospermum, you've got it here in a container and over here in the garden, in the ground. Is there any trick to keeping it It's covered with, it's loaded with buds and the lots and lots of flowers? They like a water-soluble fertilizer about once a week. And what happens at the end of the season? It just, when it finishes blooming, will well, this bloom all summer? It stops blooming and goes to foliage during the heat of the summer, but then comes right back to bloom again almost till Thanksgiving in most climates. And here in this part of Maryland, Middletown, Zone 6, it's a tender perennial. Yes, which means without protection, it will not come back. Nancy, this building 
obviously has been here a long time, just from the, the size of the beams here and, and the stonework. This is the spring house, and it actually is older than the house. It, there was another house on the property, and this spring house went with that house, which was mid-1700s. Mid-1700s, mm -hmm. wow, that is old. And it, the spring, is that still operating? Are you still able to use that? Well, actually, that's the first thing we did when we moved here is we dug a line out to see if the spring might be good, and indeed it was. It's such a good spring that it's enough for our household, the farm, and the nursery. And it fits in with your country garden, the way you've used these old, all sorts of old containers and love things to plant up, mm -hmm. full of plants that have a real, these plants all have a real cottagey feel using lettuce with ornamentals and a big bright red spot of geraniums here that adds to that country flair. Lends itself well to that old containers. And even a living wreath. What do you call this area here? This is the fragrance garden. An apt name with all these roses and the creeping lavender. thyme and lavender. And this rose is this is just very happy here. That's white pet, which is an old-fashioned polyantha rose. Continues to bloom all summer. It's very carefree. And you don't have to prune it or anything? Just deadheading it. And now, how do you treat this differently? Um, with the hybrid cheese, you're going to prune those back almost to the ground in early spring, but I don't imagine you do that with this. No, just a little trimming to be able to walk by the, through the pathways, really, is all it requires. And you don't have to spray? Very little spray. Very little spray? Yes. Those polyanthas with all the, just all those buds to come, those mm -hmm. are very satisfying roses. And very hardy. In zone six, you don't do anything to protect it. No, nothing at all. So it's a circular fragrance garden. Yes, I have the lavenders on the outside and then the scented geraniums. And you've got time, we can walk on a little bit of it. Mm -hmm. And lavender is a hard plant for some people to grow. Oh, Do you have any tricks or tips? No, it seems so easy. Uh, this is blue cushion. It's one of the more compact varieties. And we cut it after it blooms, and it'll rebloom in September. It likes a limey soil, so we always give it some lime in the early spring. And the roses like that, too, so they're a good match together. How do you get kids interested in gardening? Nancy and Ron give them a garden of their own. Stay with us. Tonight, real estate gets real. First, designed to sell. These gardens in Middletown, Maryland, are the result of 20 years of dedication and experience. Nancy Walls and her husband, Ron, have created a very special garden to help pass that spirit on to the next generation. This is the children's garden. I like the scale. I can see that it is designed with children in mind. And they like to smell the plants and they also, they love to, to feel the concrete bunnies and the different textures yeah. of the plants. So you encourage them to feel and sniff and... Oh yes. Everything is selected with children in mind? Yes, this is the section of the garden where I tried to do petite things and this is the petite hookahs. Is that really a petite cultivar? Yes. What, the name is petite? Yes. And the petite hookra is planted right next to a normal size. Yes, that's green ice, which is also a wonderful hookra. So that really gives a good comparison of the difference. Yes. And from this perspective, it looks as if the garden's divided up into four sections. You've got the wall here and this section, and then the other side of the arbor, and a maze. Yes, it is. This is the pizza garden with the slice out. And the pizza garden has all the ingredients for a pizza. That's right, the oregano, basil, thyme, and the marigolds are the cheese. And that's the salad bowl over there. And the children can walk through the maze. There's a little fairy garden with baby's breath. And this wall is the perfect scale for children. Yes, Ryan and I built it so that children could get down their hands and knees and crawl through or look through the windows out into the other sections of the gardens. I think we're very fortunate. 
on this farm because we have a little bit of everything. We have the mountains in the background, and we have the stream that runs through. So I enjoy, I enjoy being outside with nature. And I'm hoping that after Ron and I are gone that our children will continue the gardens and, and bring people much happiness.